Got a nice little snowman here. And even better, we got an XJ over here. Welcome back, Rec J. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. We've got a special guest here today. It is Rec J. Rec J was built and uh, recovered from a, a wrecked XJ. So uh, it has been fully restored. It is on the road and it's been driven for the last year and a half. That's that's probably a year and a half since we did this lift. It's uh, it's my dad's Jeep now. He takes it to go skiing. It's a 2001 XJ Limited. Got a nice little lift on it. A couple other doodads and knickknacks, and we're gonna we're gonna go into it and see how it's been holding up. All right, guys, here is Rec J, a 2001 Jeep Cherokee XJ Limited. We did a little bit of work on this bad boy. It's got my old Jeep tailgate with the gorgeous Orvis spoiler. I uh, didn't want to let that go to waste. Well, not waste. I sold the perfect XJ. I sold my Black Beauty a couple years ago, and I couldn't let this rare part part so i kept kept it we put it on my dad's rec j i love that thing much better than that ugly jolly rancher light and uh yeah so here she is sitting on factory icon 16 inch wheels wrapped in general grabber tires they are 245 75 r16s we got ourselves a rough country three inch lift i think this is the perfect stance so we'll go over Rec J, front to rear, I guess, then top to bottom, so on and so forth. Yeah, so this whole front was completely smashed up. Grill was smashed, AC condenser was smashed, radiator support bracket was smashed, the radiator was smashed, the electric fan was smashed. It's got a terrible impact right here. And this, this whole bumper support was pushed in. But uh, yeah, so, we got uh, new bumper ends. Uh, well, the whole bumper is new. This was a bumper from my two-door, my blue Jeep. Um, we put in new fog lights uh, a few months back. This grill is all spray painted. This is that Home Depot hammered black. Goes off pretty cool with the, the black. This is not factory black. This and this and this. This is all Rust-Oleum gloss paint right from Home Depot right out of the spray can it's a pretty darn good match to the factory Jeep paint it's not too bad <laughs> it blends in real nice so this door is factory Jeep paint this is my Home Depot spray paint uh, let's go over all the actual bodywork so we can see if we can find a difference uh, Home Depot Home Depot Home Depot we, uh, we got a little handprint in the clear coat when we were painting it. We really put our print on this one. And this is all factory Jeep parts, just refurbished. Again, more Home Depot paint. Home Depot, Home Depot. What the heck? There's another handprint. <laughs> we are not professional painters. And <laughs> moving along, yeah, so basically the whole front is, uh, is Home Depot paint. I do believe this uh, this part of the cowl was banged up, you know, hit this down with a hammer, a little swipe of Bondo, and uh, that's it. The front is repaired. New fenders, new header panel, new, new, new. Here we go. This is shiny here. This door is factory XJ paint, and we picked off the emblems. The, the limited emblem was peeling, and we pulled off the, the door trim. I really hate the door trim on uh, 9701s. Uh, the old XJ trim that goes down here with the ribs, I think that looks a lot better, but whatever. So I take an XJ and I peel that off. No big deal. And coming along here, factory rear door, factory rear quarter, up to here. This part was all spray painted because this in here, on both sides of this, this window sill, it was rusted, it was rusted pretty bad down in here. So we took out the glass and we ground down the rust, put a little Bondo on it, and then painted it up nice and neat. So it uh, it is rust free. And what I did to blend the old paint with the new paint was 
I drew a line and made a nice little pinstripe. If you remember from the Perfect XJ video, I explained that on Black Beauty, I got a reflective pinstripe. And moving up from there is my reflective black pinstripe. I got this black pinstripe to go over the hideous white pinstripe that came from the factory. So I did the same thing to this Jeep. I put on my reflective pinstripe to match the two colors in the rear. And from this angle, thanks to the snow on the ground, you can see this isn't exactly as shiny as the factory because it's a spray can. And I don't even think we polished it. We didn't buff it. We even left our prints on it. So that is the body. What else? Oh yeah, we did a little rust repair work. There was some holes in the, the rockers. So we ground out the rust, filled in a little bit with some metal and then bondoed that too. Uh, anything to cut the rust out, we did, because rust is bad, okay? Here we go, the tail lights, our factory. This is my Black Beauty hatch once again. Rear bumper was sanded down and painted. We got our factory bumper ends. Looking pretty crusty. What are the chances? <laughs> yep, yep, that figures. Yikes. Because that was a little rusty. Factory tail lights. And the same thing over here. We got our paint up top and we got the factory quarter panel paint down here. Factory doors and again, the rockers right there were done. Got a little bit of rust poking through this door. That sucks, eh, must be new. Must be new, this is my dad's skiing vehicle. He goes up to Vermont. So from Long Island to Vermont multiple times a year to ski. This thing gets quite a bit of salty snow and muck on it. But she's holding up real nice. Got a Dan H sticker here. Shout out to Bug. It's a, it's a Bug's Life. Well, she's goat now, goat off-road. And my D&E and a garage sticker peeled off. Sorry, d and &E, I gotta pop a new one on. But hey, I'm wearing the d and &E shirt. There it is. So there we go. Paint is looking good. It's not perfect, but you know, hey, not bad for a 20-year-old XJ. And we also did the roof gloss black too. So there we have it, looking good. Not a bad looking Jeep, not bad at all. Oh, and I also got these LED headlights. These look really cool. And the fog lights are LED. I think I mentioned that before. Uh, it's got all these crazy uh, LEDs wired up to these fog lights. Uh, these are gonna have to go. So nice bright lighting. Let's, uh, let's take a look under the hood. To do that, we'll open up the door. I did have to rehang this door. I got a video on it. Of course, the door checks do its pop pop thing. They all do. But uh, I redid the hinges on this door and uh, I got a video for that. I'll, I'll leave a link to the video. I'll leave a link to the whole playlist. Why not? So, popping this hood. This is probably one of the worst XJ doors I have ever seen. We got some bad hinges right in here. That was a completely shot, and the hinge itself is ripping off the body. Yeah, not good. All right, here is our factory 4.0. We even have a working hood light. I'm proud of that one. Not many people still have those. This is it, nothing special here. The only uh, claim to fame is I was able to restore this thing, every nut and bolt, back to 100% factory original. Let's take a look at the damage I fixed. This corner unibody is pretty well bashed. Now I had taken a straight bracket and you could see how far it's off. This is supposed to screw in through here and this is supposed to screw in through here. We got a, we got a lot of work to do to straighten this out, but fortunately, we don't have to. We are just gonna cut out this whole piece. I think I did a pretty good job, but uh, this inner fender quarter, this, this whole part of the unibody was drilled out and replaced. There it is, guys. We got this baby out. Check it out. So far, all I did was just lay this baby in place and uh, wow. So far, so good. Went ahead and weld it back in. 
But I made sure I measured everything. I, uh, I cornered it, measured it, made sure everything was equal. Everything lined up just perfectly. I measured from this body hole to this corner piece right there. And I got the same dimensions from this body hole right here to this front piece. And then I also crossed it up from that same body hole to this front body hole. And then, of course, right back this way. Measured that, it's just about the same, so I know it is square. This whole front end was completely wrecked, smashed in, hence the name Wreck J. But uh, again, all factory original parts, and it is looking 100% brand new. Well, <laughs> as good as it's going to look for a 20-something year old Jeep. So, going over all the components, basically the engine itself was untouched. Uh, we put all factory tubes and bottles and brackets in. Uh, this whole area was smashed in. That's a new power steering reservoir, power steering pump. We had to go through a couple pumps. I think we got rebuilt ones and the first one we got was crappy. Uh, we had a little problem with the Dorman inlet tube. Uh, I put that in brand new. Oh look, it's rusting already. Son of a bee. Shite. Uh, brand new inlet tube came with pinholes and it was leaking. Look at this shit. Shite. This Dorman water inlet is leaking at the weld from the nut to the inlet tube. So that's all, that's all JB Weld in a custom Coke can collar held together by a little hose clamp. So that's uh that's in we did uh the water pump timing chain all that other good stuff this thing was running like a top really good strong engine i am so happy rec j is running like new all right moving down here underneath the jeep didn't do too much down here we only took off the whole front end because we had to put a lift on but while we were at it we dressed up the front end we rebuilt it uh, we had the front end out, so it was a good time to put an uh, oil pump in. And while the oil pan was dropped, old oil pan is finally out. This thing took a nasty hit. So we had access to the connecting rod bearings, so we went ahead and replaced the rod bearings while we were at it. And I'm going to clip in my new Clevite bearing. There she is, looking good. Here is a look at the front end. We rebuilt it with a three inch rough country lift. There is a track bar drop bracket. Everything handles really great. Only problem is it's a ski vehicle. So it's covered in road sludge. This is fresh from the mountain. So we gotta make sure we clean the heck out of this stuff so it doesn't rot to pieces. That's just a fact of life up here in the Northeast. To the back. Still got our Rough Country 3 inch lift going on. We got 3 inch lift leaf springs. We got our shocks back here. We got this awesome G2 diff cover. The diff was done along with everything else. I got a good video that goes over some post lift procedures you might want to try. Also right here, we got the rear disc brake conversions. Can't forget that. We got nice disc brakes on this XJ. Unfortunately, the rust has claimed another exhaust. We'll have to address that. Uh, there's always rust issues with exhaust. Another thing that happens, ow, another thing that happens is uh, these EVAP lines, where are they? It connects to the metal. Sometimes you get an EVAP leak. Here we go, here's an EVAP line. Gotta watch out for these. Sometimes the ends of these rot, they dry rot, and you'll get a, a gross leak. Or, uh, or a small leak code, usually a line like this is a gross leak, that or the gas cap. But yeah, take a look at your EVAP lines, make sure they're in good shape. Now, check out this development. Yikes, this just happened <laughs> within the last couple years. Well, it took 20 years of its life to start rotting. This was a plate made by the previous owner, I think. I don't know how I missed it. It must have been blended in real nice, but it rotted all around it. This was covering some pretty bad floor pan rot. And we're gonna have to address this floor pan because this is the rug, and uh, oh, <laughs> that <laughs> that is not good right there. Hello, rug. My word. I don't know. That 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 sucks. That's kind of a heartbreaker right there. Oh well, we'll do a floor pan. No worries. It looks like a bolt is actually broken. I'm oh, gonna have to adjust that too. There is Rec J on the outside. Not too bad for a Rec XJ. 
we uh, we did a good job getting her up and running. Still some things to address, like the exhaust and the floor pan, obviously. Uh, 20-something year old Jeep. We're gonna have some rust, especially up here in the Northeast. What are you gonna do? But inside is looking pretty nice. We have limited seats. They are fully adjustable and they work, limited style. These were from Beach Jeep, I do believe. There's my, <laughs> the rips from my gun. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, here we have just a clean factory dashboard. We still got the heated seat buttons. This Jeep has a 231 command track transfer case. My other limiteds had a 242. Anyhow, center console is solid with that JCR bracket matching leather passenger seat. Again, stock dashboard. This used to have the XJ limited radio, but uh, it crapped out, unfortunately. Uh, now it's got a WJ radio in there. So it, uh, it looks almost factory XJ, but it is not. And here's the dash. We got, uh, look at that, LEDs in there. So pretty clean factory unmolested interior uh, in the front and the back we have uh, a no back seat this thing is a ski vehicle so we put equipment in there uh, it just goes up to the mountains full of gear and skis and whatnot so of course <laughs> you need a shovel to dig yourself out uh, good to have the old bottle of windshield wiper fluid and a top down jumper Coming around inside the cargo compartment, <laughs> just a few short hours ago, we couldn't open this. Classic XJ rear hatch fail. It failed right here on the spot. <laughs> Classic XJ hatch. We gotta go inside. Yep, yep, I know, it sucks. So what we did with that was, we had my dad go inside. All right, you gotta climb back there, reach your hand behind that panel and feel for that little, I guess, threaded rod pull up on that yeah we pulled this out he reached his hands down in there he was able to pull on that little lever we got this sucker open pull it be strong you got you got it all right give it a pull got it and then once it was open we dropped this interior panel there's two clips right there, there you go we reattach that little rod that opens up the tailgate and we made ourselves a nice little modification. There we go guys, that is the key to the fix. If you thread on two 10 by 24 little nuts and tighten them down on there, you'll have a nice little slide proof latch. This should get the job done. So let's see if it works. Here we go. <laughs> Crap, it's it's locked. <laughs> Here we go. Unlock. All right, Dad. I'll let you do the honors. Thank you, Dad. There we go. Nice. All right. Well, that yeah, should be a permanent fix. Beautiful. Nice. All right. Let's put this back together. You put the 10 by 24 nuts on there, and that should clamp down that little piece. That sucker shouldn't budge in a long, long time. So that was our fix. And working every time now. Uh, beautiful. So in here, this is our XJ cargo carrier. It's got a Niner little uh, cargo utility spare tire cover. Always got some oil and trans fluid ready to go. You never know when an XJ is going to spring a leak. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, got a nice matching spare tire. Another icon wheel in here but i don't believe that icon wheel is painted like these are we uh we did a nice once over on these wheels painted them up and then we got the general grabbers on there so yeah this is the rec j now let's start her up there we go she starts right up but as you can hear Yep, it's got a little tapping. Doesn't sound great. I'm not quite sure if it's tapping like a, like a lifter tapping 
or a knock, like a rod knock, or a piston slap. I uh, haven't yet determined it. I uh, gotta keep an eye on it. But it gradually, over time, it became a little worse. So it's not the connecting rod bearings, it's something else. But I think we're just gonna let this baby ride until something catastrophic happens. I mean, I got some XJ engines in the back. We'll just pop a new engine in. Right now, it's not broke, you know? So if it's not broke, don't fix it. Well, let me know what you guys think. What do we got? Uh, rod knock, we got piston slap, or is that a, a lifter tick? I don't know. It does go away, or it does lessen when it's warm. Right now, it's pretty darn cold, pretty loud, and pretty gross. Yeah. All right, so one of the reasons why we're even making this video is because on the way to and from Vermont, my dad was driving, and a check engine light popped on. Uh, no big deal. Happens all the time, right? It's an old Jeep. But uh, the odd part was it went off. And then uh, a little later, it popped on again. And a little later, it turned back off again. So there's an intermittent check engine light. Not really sure what's going on. Uh, I did get this new launch creator. <laughs> a launch C reader? I don't know what it is. But uh, I'm going to test it out, see if this works. See if it can tell me what's going on with that CEL. Um... I have a suspicion it could be a uh, O2 sensor wire, maybe shorting out. And another thing was, um, I remember it did have a EVAP, a gross leak, uh, but that could have been uh, the fuel cap not tightened. So that's off, and the uh, the other check engine light's off. But uh, let's plug this in, and we'll we'll see what's going on with it. So here is the launch creeder. <laughs> maybe it stands for C reader, as in car reader. I got these little. Uh, gel packets don't eat them they tell you not to eat them so uh, let's not eat them and this is what it looks like we got to uh, just plug her into the OBD2 to get power oh look at this there's a reader in here already hey dad I found it <laughs> is that mine or yours? Yeah, it's yours <laughs> I never even took it I never put it in we were looking for this for like a month <laughs> yeah <laughs> here we go Let's turn the ignition to the run position, plug this thing in, and let's see if uh, see if we can get some information out of it. All right, booted right up. That's good. Let's uh, let's move this sucker over to diagnose. Let's see if we can diagnose it because that's what we want. We'll hit OK. So it's kind of lightweight. It's got nice uh, push buttons. Uh, feels pretty good. No complaints there. And a nice, very easy to read screen. I do like the display. But why is everything failing? <laughs> what is that? Oh, here we go. Uh, status, okay. DTCs, we got one. It's it's all ready. Everything is ready. At readiness complete, seven. And not complete. Okay, so it passed all its monitors. This thing will pass inspection because there are no check engine lights. But we, we have something to address. Uh, what is it? Can it tell me what it is? Um, I don't know. What's IM do? I don't know. Hit OK. OK. Let's uh, read codes. All right. Processing. <laughs> hey, look at that. An O2 sensor bank to sensor 2. This thing again. That's exactly what I thought it was from last time. I, I do believe we got a, a bad wire in there just uh, tapping around and uh, messing things up. So we'll, we'll check that out. Let's see if we can go back. Uh, I'm going to erase codes. Okay. Clear, reset, diagnosis. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. I'm going to hit okay and not go back. Please turn on... Turn ignition on with engine off. Okay. First engine to continue. So don't start it, just turn the ignition on. Well, it, it is on. Oh, ignition yeah. on, engine off. Okay. Processing. Key on, engine off. That is the key to codes. Emissions related diagnostic information has been cleared. Alright, well, I don't have emissions problems, but whatever let's read them again 
see if it pops up or not. Da da da. No call. Okay. Well, well, that's cool right there. And it reads codes and clears codes. That's like ninety percent of uh, the work you want a reader to do. Especially if you own a Jeep. <laughs> Find the problem, ignore the problem. <laughs> Perfect for XJs. So, yeah. Let's see. We got uh Hey, look at this. I like this. EVAP check. Uh, cat. O2 sensors. That might be catalytic converters and O2 sensor related in there. So, yeah. We do have an O2 sensor issue. We'll have to address this. Um, not a big deal. But, uh, I like O2 sensor tests. This is pretty cool. This says a lot more than I thought it would. And, uh, it did what we wanted to do. It was right on the money with what I thought the problem was. So, I'm gonna give this system a pass. I'll give it a thumbs up in my book. What else could it do? Battery. Let's see what it says about the battery. Entering system. Like it's gotta, like it's gotta hack into the Jeep. <laughs> Like it's a hacker. Here we go. Go ahead. Go crack the Jeep code. Battery. Abnormal. 11.6 volt. Well, I'm drawing some juice. We got lights on right here because the door's yeah. wide open yeah. and we had the hatch open, you know, all morning fixing that stupid little latch problem. So, uh, not too worried about that. And let's go back. That's pretty cool. Hey, uh, so this launch thing, I'm going to give it two thumbs up. I'm not going to go into this whole thing because uh, I don't know if I have a manual. And I'm not going to waste your guys' time. <laughs> but uh, I'll see if I can put a link in the description of this video. So if you guys want to buy it, that would give me some... Uh, some oh, here, look. It was stuffed at the bottom. Uh, I'll take a once-over of this. And then, uh, yeah, I'll leave any info in the description for you guys. All right, so there we go one more time. The Launch Creator V. <laughs> I'm going to call it the Launch Car Reader 5. So this is pretty cool. I'm going to leave this here for my dad, and I'm going to take back my OBD2 Bluetooth reader because I hooked that up to my phone. And now my dad could look up stuff on his Jeep with his codes, and we're going to eat these now. Here, here's your packet. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. I'm hungry. Should we put it in water or just yeah, down the hatch? Yeah. <laughs> Drink water after. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, there we have it. There is Rec J. About a year and a half after the lift, maybe about two years plus since we restored it from uh, from smash condition. That's a daily driver now. It's it's yeah. a uh, it's a travel jeep. It's reliable enough to go from uh, from Long Island, New York, all the way up to Vermont for skiing multiple times a year. Multiple times. Don't drink. You, <laughs> you, <laughs> don't drink. He still races skiing, so we got to get him onto the mountain. Yeah, He's uh, he, he needs to ski. So that's it. That's uh that's the Rec J right there. I'll give another once over. All right guys, that is it for uh for Rec J's review and uh hard to believe this was that same smashed Rec Jeep in my backyard a few years ago. That's it guys. Appreciate your views. Remember to like and subscribe. Uh, let me know what you think about that engine noise, uh, what I need to dig into to uh, fix that noise. And we're going to do a floor pan eventually. Some other stuff. Hey, it's a Jeep. It's always going to need some love. But uh, that's why I have a YouTube channel, so we could fix <laughs> Jeeps and help you guys fix our Jeeps. So that's it. Uh, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next project. Peace. <laughs> Battery was a little weak. <laughs> Clinkity clankity. <laughs> Exhaust vibrating. Tappity tappy. Nothing like an old Jeep. Later, Reg J.